What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Salt. I did a little bit of investigation and so I've got a couple of things that I'd like to talk about at the beginning of this episode. First and foremost, the world I think is indeed circular. Just from the basic research that I've done in between episodes, pretty sure the world is circular whereas I had thought that it will just keep generating as far as you go out. I could still be wrong. I need to verify it a few more times but I'm hearing people alluding to the fact that hey, that the game is circular barely got that axe up in time and I didn't get that one up in time at all I just let him cut me it was kind of like one of those final samurai shampoo moments where you have to let somebody stab you in order to stab them back like ah the sacrificial swing on my axe you will die false pirate yar pirate combat we feel like we should have cutlasses or something Arr. it's okay I'll just say ar more just so people know that it's pirate combat. You gotta be careful about that stuff. You gotta be careful. So yeah, if we can get ourselves to the point where we can figure out where the corner of the map is, I need to get a compass. And so getting a compass is a little bit of a pain. Sometimes it happens, some games it happens earlier than others. So for example, in my stream, I got a compass like five minutes after I started the game. Whereas... Let's see... Whereas in this game, we got a sextant really early, and so it just sort of depends. You can't really tell what you're going to be getting until you get it. Sometimes I feel like headshots don't really matter, but I think that just stabbing away at them would be fine. We've got a pirate short sword, 13 slash, 45 delay. How does that compare with what we have right now? Really? Really? Wow, that's a really good sword. Okay, so we got ourselves a new pirate sword. That's pretty sweet. So let's call that number one now. We're not going to use the axe anymore. I mean, I do like battle axes, but... Oh, it doesn't look any different. I was hoping it would look slightly different so that it would denote that it was the pirate sword. Even if the hilt was just a different color, it would have made me happy, but I guess not. I guess not. Let's go ahead and we'll... Why can't I loot you? Because I'm inside a tree! That plant has finally found the best defense to keep prying fingers of adventurers from picking you out. We've got a deer over there. Oh, the viewpoint. I was like, what was that adjustment in the viewpoint? The viewpoint draws in when you start sprinting. And then I wonder if it does that to make it seem like you're moving faster, like a perceptional thing. Because, like, I know the lower you are to the ground, the faster it feels like you're going, too. Anyways, I wonder if that's just to like adjust the perception of how fast you think your character is going. I'm going to try and get this deer over here because we could seriously use the rawhide. Oh, I thought I aimed way too high on that one, but apparently it won. Or, I'm sorry, apparently the shot. Oh my god. Okay, so where did that arrow go? There it is right there. Unfortunately, it's buried underneath the surf, so we may not ever see that other arrow, arrow again. What is that? Is that a badass pirate? What is that? Or is that just like a normie pirate? It's a normie pirate. Okay, that's fine. Like, well, my name is Norman, but I think you have to call me Normie. I mean, I don't think Norman is that, like, unique of a name, but I don't think it's that rare either anymore, you know? Like, I think that not many people are named Norman is really what I'm getting at, so I feel like I should be given at least some points for originality. I always think it's funny how names go through cycles. I also, I read a book by Jonathan Lethem that I would strongly recommend to anybody. There's a book by Jonathan Lethem called Freakonomics, and I strongly recommend it to anybody. If you haven't read it, believe me. I think it was a New York Times bestseller for a while, too. I read it in a critical, like a 400-level class for critical writing and story crafting and things back when I was an English major. But, yeah, that's right. I switched my, I don't know if I've talked about this on the channel, but I switched my major like 700 times. Like, it took me forever to get to the one that I graduated with. And my student debt shows that that was a terrible, terrible miscalculation. Now, based on the way that this is beached, I think that we came in from over there, possibly. Yeah, we came in from over there. So maybe I'll go... Let's ping pong in this episode. We'll do a little bit of the old pinging and ponging. And I think we'll hit that island, then we'll hit that island. We'll just bounce around a little bit until we find our bearings one more time. I think that if the world is cyclical... I'm sorry, not cyclical. If the world is circular or spherical... We should be able to fairly simply catch our headings eventually. It should allow the boat to move even on sand with the sail up. But yeah, it's going to throw our heading off slightly, but it'll be okay. 
we're gonna go over to this island right here we also need to do some nighttime exploration because if the world is finite and circular the problem that we run across is that everything that we are grabbing for ourselves may not respawn I don't know if that's truly the case or if that's just a little bit of speculation but nonetheless, it does make me a little bit nervous about the diminishing returns on resources as we run throughout all these islands. Now, obviously, over here, we've got ourselves a rich stone node straight off the bat, or straight off the pick. Depends what tool you're using. We still haven't found any ironite or anything like that, which has got me a little bit down, a little bit down and sad. We do, however, have a whole lot of hard stone, so I guess that works for now. Also not we're also not finding a whole lot of gemstones, which can be problematic. Because we need those for vendoring and also some of the other high-level crafts, but it'll probably work itself out in the end. A couple more boulders to grab. All right. I used up a bunch of flint making campfires, so honestly, we actually... I know it seems like it's not that big of a deal, but we actually do kind of need some more hard... I'm sorry. Yeah, we do need more hardwood. We need more flint, though. Flint was what I was talking about. Flint, flint, flint. And I ain't talking about Flint, Michigan. Let's go ahead and... There's another boulder over here. I guess this island isn't going to have all the things that I thought it was going to have, but... Oh well, it's got a couple of useful things, so I guess we can make use of it there. I don't know if I'm, I'm still, I've been still been pondering about whether or not I think crafting bases fits into the game. I think in order to make it fit, like I said previously, it would require certain other systems in play, like the ability to recruit your own pirates, pirates sailing around that attack people. I don't know if these are intended designer goals, and in fact, I haven't read the roadmap to the future for this game, but I probably should. I should sit down and probably thumb through it at some point and just get a feel for where the game's going in the future. I do like the game, and I do hope that it, con it continues development for as long as humanly possible. Hopefully the developer made enough money off of his early access campaign on Steam to actually keep it afloat for a while. Some games you can't really tell, because like some games, they'll hit the, the best sellers on the front page, but even the most sex like the most successful, I almost said successful, but anyways, the most suck successful. there we go, sucking and sexing and... I don't know what I got going on in the brain today. It's just all kinds of nastiness taking place. But anyways, even the most successful indie games of all time only sold like, they only made like $40,000 their first day on YouTube. I'm sorry, their first, not their first day on YouTube, their first day on Steam. So for example, I think Super Meat Boy did like $50,000 the first day that it was up on Steam. And... Ed McMullen had to split that money with his partner, and so that's 25 grand. And you have to take into account they've been working on the game without collecting a paycheck for about a year and a half or whatever. Unless it was Kickstarter, but I don't think it was Kickstarter. I'm pretty sure they worked on that one out of pocket, and so technically he's probably pretty, he was pretty, probably pretty far in debt. Knowing what I know about adult life, if I hadn't collected a paycheck for about a year, I'd be really, really, I mean, I wouldn't even be afloat anymore, to be honest with my finances. I'd be done for. But yeah, I need paychecks like on the zippy, otherwise that doesn't work for me. Yeah, if you figure he'd probably been floating his finances for a while, he's got to pay off a bunch of back bills and things like that. You can assume that even the most successful games of all time did not make that much money comparatively. Like, they did make a lot of money compared to other indie games, but that's extended over, like, years they make a lot of money. If you need the money, like, right now and you're broke and you're trying to keep your bills paid, you really need your first week up on Steam to be super successful so that you can both backlog some of your bills and frontlog some of your bills. Get kind of nasty. I'm going to drop the boat right here. Drop the boat, don't drop the boat, baby. Drop the boat, don't tip the boat over. I like to sing. I don't know if that's a normal thing for everybody. What the hell? That was pretty awesome. I don't know what just happened right there. It's like the boat helped me. It was like, here, let me help you on top of me. I feel good about you being on top of me right now. Like, hooray! I'm glad we're in agreement. I can be on top of you. Welcome to the world of Splattercat. On top of things. About to lose our sunlight fairly shortly. That's okay. I don't really care for it anyways. I'd love to find myself some moonstone, and we don't really wander around at night very much because the game is just so dark. If you have a moon, it's not too bad, but if you're stuck on an island with no moon, it can be very difficult to find your way around. I don't know why I like jumping off my boat so quickly after I beach it, but I do. It makes me happy just to, like, ride the front end all the way up onto shore and then leap off heroically like the heroic pirate that I... Okay, maybe I'm not the most heroic of pirates. I've killed a lot of people today. We're too full to eat that, but we're not too full to eat ourselves some deer, deer meat. And so I will eat that deer meat, I will put it in my tummy, and everything will be amazing. This island's looking pretty picked clean. I'm use my sextant to figure out where we are. We're actually, okay, so we're at zero east, zero south. Does it depict, does it have your facing? How does that work? 
Because if it switches the notation... Okay. So technically all directionality is rationalized in terms of north and east and north and west. You can actually leave south out of it because of various symmetries that exist in navigation. You can leave south out of it entirely and in fact I've never used south once in the dozens of maps that I've made. You just don't use south. You just use, you say north, northwest, north, northeast. But if you go the other way what you can do is you can flip it around and subtract 90 or whatever. And then it'll put it back into north, northwest headings. And so no matter what you do, maybe that's just for geology, but as far as I know, swapping notations and switching from a northwest, northeast to a southeast, southwest, we don't do that in geology. At least I was never trained to. I was told never to do that, so. Let's go ahead and rest through the night. There it is. And so we're back up in the morning. I'm going to grab this log over here. It looks like there is some loot laying around. Not a lot, but... It's something that we might be able to make use of. We got another mud pile over here. I haven't been doing a whole lot of... No, we've got a pirate chest. Okay. I haven't seen any pirates, but I'll take it. Eh, kind of a crappy chest. Just a bunch of really, really generic basic objects on it. Nothing that's going to be too incredibly helpful. It'll be good if we ever end up retrofitting that big boat, but as of right now, we haven't found it yet. So seeing as... I wish you could actually map things out on a piece of paper... So seeing as we're at 0, 0, this would be a really, really good spot because essentially we're at the origin right now. This would be a really, really good spot to start mapping from. In fact, I think there would be very few spots as good to start mapping from. Obviously, you can make the argument that you could just adapt 3, 3 or 5, 5 or whatever to be the new origin and just shift everything over in your notation. But being at 0, 0 does simplify the process a little bit, and I do wish that we had some kind of piece of paper or something that we could map on. And then you could designate that as zero, 0, like some sort of grid, essentially. Because I'm willing to bet, given that the game uses... Wow, there's a lot of wood on this island. There is a ton of wood, and also a ton of lag. God. Alright, well... Let's bounce on over to that island over there, then, I guess. There's nothing too interesting over here, and so I'm not really stoked about staying in boring places for too long. Let's jump on off. Raise sail! Make ready with the mast! Not make ready with the mast. Calm down, physicists. Calm down. I can see all the physicists getting all jumpy and excited off in the crowd. No, I didn't say make ready with the mast. I said make ready with the mast. Chemists, you can come along too if you really want to. But don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. Nothing worries me more than a chemist with an excited look on his face. Like, seriously, if you ever see a chemist that looks excited about anything, you should be terrified. Because something's about to explode. I can virtually guarantee you there's about to be an explosion, something weird's about to happen, somebody's about to mutate. Chemists only get happy when weird stuff happens. It's rare. Chemists don't get happy that often, but when they do, it means that two compounds were about to mix and something crazy's about to happen. Shit's about to get real up in the chemical world. Mine that boulder, get myself some flint. And I thought I saw a rich boulder around here as we were sailing in, but I could be wrong. Let me take a look around here. Ooh, there's a ripe tree fruit right there. Give me. There we go. We'll get rid of that. Sorry about that, everybody. I had to fiddle around with stuff. I had to jump around in between episodes and just, like, fiddle with things, unfortunately. My work day today has been very, very odd and filled with unexpected adventures. And so, frankly, I'm just trying to, like, iron them all out and make sure that everything works according to plan. I think that where we were at as we were exploring these little islands, I am debating the possible prudence of starting to mark these islands on prominent points with flags so that I know that I've been here. I think I have lost my bearings slightly because I went and handled something real fast and then I had to come back and now I'm feeling slightly lost. So let's go ahead and make a flag. I do think that's a good idea. At least a flag or a campfire or something that we can throw out here. Let's go to the crafting menu and in order to make a flag I think I need to go with a log and some cloth. Let's just make a bunch of these right now. I think that that's a pretty good plan. It looks like it doesn't take that many resources, so I think I'll probably just make like five of them for now. And what we'll do is if we've been to an island from now on, now that we know that the world is circular and it's not like generating new stuff, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm planting flags on areas where we can figure out where we've been already. And so there it is. We've already handled that. Our first flag is in place. Oh yeah, I forgot that we got this pirate sword. That's pretty fun. I'm excited about that. Who's not excited about pirate swords? Pirate swords are the best. What's not to love about a good pirate sword for stabbing and thrusting? There's one thing that Splattercat loves. It's got to be thrusting. Thrusting is on the list somewhere. 
So let's grab ourselves these logs over here. I saw them laying off in the distance. You find it. We were, we were sabotaged. We were distracted momentarily by a stick of bamboo. And so having searched this island already... Ooh, good. A weak boulder. Let's go ahead and handle... No. Don't shoot arrows at the weak boulder. I need you to pickaxe the weak boulder. There we go. Although I do feel like picking on the boulder because it's weak is really not a nice thing to do. I mean... It's not the only reason that I decided I was going to fight with that boulder, but it definitely helped. I mean, the chance that it wouldn't fight back is always good. Where did that arrow go? I fired an arrow point blank into the ground, but it looks like it despawned, unfortunately. Alright, well, I guess I no longer have that arrow. Good Goodbye, arrow. Goodbye. I named you Lenny, and you were good to me. Unfortunately, our time together had to come to an end. Dearest sweet Lenny, may I see you on the other side. Cross the rainbow bridge, ye adorable arrow. That one day we may again sit at the side of the Allfather in Valhalla. Noble arrow thou. Farewell. It's just like a little... That's a poem that I'm working on. I think it's a little bit retro. I think it's a little bit old-fashioned. But you know what? I think that I might try and publish it. I think I may reach out to some publishers and say, Can you take my terrible, terrible poem about Odin and make me famous? That's your job, right? Woo! And from now on, people will be like, that's that guy that wrote that terrible poem about Odin. And I'll be like, that's me. What's going on over here? So Brad McQuaid is working on a new project, apparently. I'll talk about that in the next week's episode of the week, the Weekend Review, though. I don't know if I trust Brad McQuaid anymore. Brad McQuaid is one of those guys who's burned me on so many games now at this point that I'm just like, well. Like, Richard Garriott. I still have faith in Richard Garriott. Brad McQuaid, not sure if I still have faith in Brad McQuaid. It's been since like 1995 since he put out anything noteworthy, and I'm not sure if you can coast on coattails for that long. Or, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you can rest on your laurels for that long without having produced anything else awesome. Wow, that was kind of hectic. Felt like we were on an amusement park ride for a second right there, like when you go to, what's the name of the place? Universal Studios, and they have the earthquake ride that you go through. I mean, we basically call that, that ride is just like California to us. We have earthquakes all the time. In fact, we had like a 5.0 the other night, which is a little one. It's not that bad. You can call me back when it gets above a 6.5. At that point, I will take notice, but I still will not be worried. When you get around to like 8.0, all right. Then as a Californian, I start to get at least slightly more interested in what's taking place. Because an 8.0 is actually able to like shake stuff off foundations and cause problems. Supposedly, the housing codes in California... Make it so that all buildings have to be rated for 12.0s if they're above, like, a certain height, but I don't know. I live in the suburbs, and so most buildings are not above a certain height. And there's nothing more fun than watching the structure and framing of your house shake around your head. Like, have you ever seen your whole house sway back and forth while you're inside of it? Not a fun experience. And so when you start getting those 6.5s, 7.0s, you're like, eh, that's a little bit nerve-wracking. A little bit. It's worse when they wake you up in the middle of the night. That's what does it for me, because the earthquakes always seem to happen at like 2 in the morning. They never happen in the middle of broad daylight when you're just sitting there like, oh, that was an earthquake. It's always when you're dead asleep that the big one hits, and you're just like, oh my god. Give you half a heart attack before you wake up, sitting there gasping for air in bed because you're already having a bad dream, and then you got woke up by an enormous earthquake. Let's continue off this way. I don't see anything up in the trees that looks incredibly useful. This place does not have so many things laying around that I'm not inclined to say that we haven't been here. So where are we right now? Let me use my sextant again to get a feel. So we went one west, we went southwest. Which could be used to reasonably extrapolate. Well, let me get back in a boat and I'll chart a heading real fast. So let me throw down a flag right... No, not you. You. There we go. I'm going to throw down a flag like... I can't place that here? Why? That's not very nice. Let me place this where I want to place it. Put it on a beach around somewhere. And essentially, so part of our MO, our operating procedure, will be that we'll sail around the edge of islands from now on looking for the flag to make sure that we've already been there. We'll treat it like the little flag that Mario raises over the castle at the end. So this will be like our... That's, I don't know. We don't have theme music, though. I wish we had theme music. Somebody should get right on that, and they should make us theme music. Something funky. Something that starts out with, like, a waka chicka waka chicka waka chicka waka chicka He's a pirate. waka chicka waka chicka waka chicka All adventures. He's a pirate. He has a mustache. waka chicka waka chicka waka chicka waka chicka 
give him all your treasure, or he'll stab your face. He is pa. He is the super pirate. Better catch his name. I don't know. That, I was just thinking that's like something along those lines. Maybe something with like a little roll on the hi hat, which is like, you know, something like that. Just get it all nice and set up. I feel like this island is empty. No, there's a pirate right there, so it's not that empty, I guess. Up we go and off the front end like I always do. Oh man, the front end sabotaged me. I have been sabotaged. You there! Oh, pirate. I have no arrows left, apparently. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Let me, let me volunteer to pay for your medical problems, because frankly, I don't feel good about that one. That right there is just not acceptable. And then you fell on it, too. That's the worst part, is after you got done, you just fell on top of it. So are there different stats on the pirate swords? I think it'd be kind of cool if they could put a Diablo-esque system in where you get, like, some random stats on things. But there would be pre-made items that were just better than others that just always had the best stats. There we go. We'll put him down with a single arrow. And so now would be the time that I would recommend we drop this. There we go. So we'll put that down right there so that we are aware that we have already hit this locality. But we haven't actually hit it yet. I'm just putting the flag there before I forget. So let's have a look around the place and see if maybe there's anything that we can scoop greedily into our bags. If there is or isn't, I promise we're still going to have a good time. Our, our good time is not reliant on loot being scooped into my bag. It is not reliant at all, dear friends. Dear friends and neighbors and colleagues. Are we colleagues? I don't know if we can count as colleagues, but... I do feel like this sword hits way harder. Wow. We are chunking this guy to death. And then we finished him off with a crit, too, just for good style points. You always finish with a crit like a little whirly do, and then you stab him in the gut real quick afterwards. But yeah, I wanted to talk about Brad McQuaid and how he destroyed my life with Vanguard. No, he didn't destroy my life with Vanguard. It's just Vanguard wasn't quite as awesome as it was supposed to be. I largely probably should blame that on SOE, since SOE has not been known to handle their IPs very well. And not knowing the specifics... I tend to blame like the front man and so that might be my problem. It may very well indeed be SOE's fault. To be honest, SOE hasn't put out a very good MMO in a while. And then again, I think we're kind of in between MMO cycles right now too. An MMO cycle. God. Made me think of like a motorcycle that's just painted all the hell back with like World of Warcraft branding on it. But anyways, I think that we're kind of in between MMO generations right now. I think that everybody has frequently acknowledged that the genre is more or less dead and that nothing new is being done inside of it. Like everything is just kind of rehashing old ideas. And then I think theme park ideas are being expanded, but I think sandbox ideas have pretty much been abandoned. Like nobody even messes with sandboxes anymore, which is disappointing because I used to find, I mean, still to this day, I would say the most fun I've ever had in MMO was the original EverQuest. Whether or not that's because I think there's a perceptional bias included in that statement where it was my first MMO. And so I think to a certain extent that might be the problem is that so many people look back on their first MMO with like an unfair fondness basically. And then once you do that, you're basically saying that no other game, once you have that bias, it's essentially internalizing that no other game can ever overshoot that original bias, you know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean because I feel like I'm explaining it really, really poorly right now. And it's my fault, but I'm hoping that people are grabbing on to whatever vague and vaporous ethereal straw that I'm holding out to them. I don't know. But yeah, I think we're in between MMO generations right now. I think it's going to be a while before we see anything truly new and innovative from any company. I think that there's a big sandbox push going on right now. Richard Garriott's working on a sandbox right now. Brad McQuaid's working on a sandbox right now. There's a whole bunch of sandbox MMOs being worked on. And so I'm hoping that we'll have like a resurgence in sandbox MMO gaming soon where... You know, if you want to build a building over there, go build a building over there, a la Star Wars Galaxies. You know, and nothing can stop you. If you want to start your own village, start your own village. Sounds like a blast, man. Go do it. You know what I mean? I think those games have the tendency to not be accessible to some people, though, too, that want to, like, build things all by themselves. Because what I remember from EverQuest is that it was tremendously social. And, in fact, that's one of the things that I very much like about Final Fantasy XIV is that it was just so much more social than any MMO I had played in years where... In order to make a simple halberk, or to do something very, very simple with crafting, you ended up in this world of just making connections and making friends that were able to do this. And I remember the first time I completed like a really a high tier item in Final Fantasy XIV, 
It was earlier on after launch, I crafted something, and all the people along the way who had helped me craft it came to see the final product when I equipped it, and everybody's like, wow, that was awesome. Like, what an adventure that was, just crafting that item. We all had to level up our trade skills to ridiculous extents. We had to do all kinds of crazy stuff to get the things so that you could have that chess piece. And it was like a pay it forward type of thing. They knew that in the future, if they wanted me to jump into their next thing that they were building, that now I owed them one, you know what I mean? It was kind of that social capital that keeps things flowing properly that works out in MMOs back in the day. And I think it, I think that's one of the very, very unique things about Final Fantasy XIV as it stands. But we're playing Salt right now, and I don't know how I got off topic. I decided that I was going to do an interim weekly review like in the middle of an episode for some reason. I think this is roundabouts where I wanted to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Salt. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Hi, do!